how to remove the catalytic converter from the 2014 Indian Vintage. Uh, I've got on the, uh, the web, look at the forums and uh, see if we can find out how other people are doing it. Uh, everyone's got great ideas but no one's actually had a go at doing it. Uh, their ideas I don't reckon we're right anyway. So uh, I thought well I'll take the bull by the horns and uh, give it a go myself and uh, so that's what I decided to do. So uh, here we go. Right, here's the bike. I'm going to get stuck into it now. As you can see, I've already taken off the, uh, the uh, rear header pipe and the catalytic converter as an assembly. Before I attempted that, obviously, I took the rear muffler off and then proceeded to undo all the clamps, bits and pieces that you need to do. And uh, so I started removing the uh, rear header pipe and catalytic converter. It's not that hard a job. It's a little bit of mucking around, but if you've got a couple of spanners and a bit of know-how, uh, you should be able to manage it quite easily. I'll just take you around the other side for a moment to show you one crucial part that you will have to take off. Or undo, I should say. It's just remove that bolt there. That holds the actual balance pipe, or, or the crossover pipe, if you want to call it that, which goes to the left-hand side um, muffler. By doing that, when you uh, are easing out the header pipe and catalytic converter as one, you can actually get this pipe and just gently move it down as you go along, and it just helps to remove the, uh, the pipe work catalytic converter. So there we have it mate, we've got it out. And there's a the little bastard there. And the Aplaris have gone all out on this one to try and stop us around, I can tell you. But uh, down there obviously is the uh, catalytic converter. It's a, it's a mesh converter. Um, stops all the pollution they say. I reckon it's a pain in the ass. Uh, gives you less performance on your bike and doesn't produce the, the proper sound that it should have. The actual mesh section sits between these two welds, between here and between there. And it's the full height and the full width of that actual section. So uh, what I'm going to attempt to do from here is uh, cut this section out, or partly cut it out, see how we go. My method might change as I go along, but uh, we're going to give it a go and we'll see how, see how things work out. So here we have it, I've uh, got my little dime grinder with a cutting wheel on it. Chopped him up, just cut it down to there, didn't go all the way around, and obviously across the top there. So now we're going to attempt to bend that down and get rid of that little bastard cat in there, and fold it back up and weld him up, and it should be like a brand new one. Now there it is, the pain in everyone's ass. So what I've done, I've just got a screwdriver in there, I've just gently eased it all the way around. Removed it down and just kept prying it open slowly, slowly, wet the screwdriver down. This so I didn't distort that plate too much, so I keep it all intact, nice straight lines. So when it goes uh, back together again, we're going to lay it up top there to where I weld it up, then it'll butt up absolutely beautifully. Now I'll uh, attempt to remove this bloody thing. Right, well, there we are, got it out. It took about 10 minutes to get out, it was a bit of a bugger. Uh, anyway, it's come out, it's come out nice and clean, pretty good, I'm very happy with it. I was a little bit wrong though, saying it was a uh, mesh core, well it is a mesh core, but I thought it was uh, fibrous type of stuff, but it's actually aluminium core. And uh, yeah, it's very, very flimsy, all stuck together, like I say, it was quite a job to get out, but uh, anyway, we got it out, you've got to butcher it a bit, but yes, just bashed a screwdriver in there and just slowly eased it out, working your way around, and there's some more bits there. So anyway, got the job done, that's the main thing. Uh, got a nice clearance here now, nice flow, beautiful, yeah, real good, no restrictions there, performance should be good now, happy chappy. Yeah, so what I've done now, I've cleaned up the edges, got it ready for uh, welding purposes, so uh, we'll get this little opening I cut out, and I'll put that back into place now, and stitch it up, and uh, give it a coat of paint after that mate, put it back on, and uh, I reckon it should be like a brand new one. Anyway, right here we go, we've got the little plate back up into its position, it's all nice and happy there. We've just put a couple of tack welds all the way around. I suggest you tack weld it, we used a MIG to do this, um, instead of just trying to do a continuous weld, I've seen some guys try and do that and get in all sorts of trouble and warping and yeah, big gaps and holes and becomes a troublesome problem for you. So uh, you need to take your time, uh, nice little tack welds. Just stitch it up like that, nice and easy, so when you start welding it, mate, it'll match in really, really good. Right, here's the catalytic converter pipe. Um, 
by uh, the little panel I cut out yesterday and uh, leave it down to remove the mesh has been uh, put back into place as you can see. Uh, we MIG welded it back on. Uh, it looks really good, really neat. We used the factory welds. We went over top of those, except for the top section obviously. We couldn't do much with that, uh, but it looks pretty neat anyway. Um, after we welded it, mate, we uh, got a grinder and just touched up the welds a little bit just to make sure they look a little bit neater. Uh, after that we sanded it down with a bit of 180 grit uh, dry paper on an orbital sander. Uh, one little tip when you uh, finish welding it and before you start grinding if you'd like you could uh, put a bit of water in there and just move that around just to see if you've got any air leaks and if you have so you can just plug those up with a bit of weld and uh, recheck it again just to make sure you've got it all right. Um, so once it's on it's a pain in the bum if you've got a leak that'll cool off again. So. From here we're just going to mask off the ends a little bit now just to get ready for painting and just to paint it up. Just uh, it'll just make it look a little bit neater. Not that you can see it, but I'm, I'm just a little bit particular with things like that. Probably a bit silly. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you the end result. Well, there is the uh, Cadillac converter pipe. And that's the back side, the side that's closest to the engine. I thought I'd just show you that side so you can uh, compare it to the front the section that I uh, put back in after cutting it out, removing the baffle. And there it is, it's nice and neat. The paint looks really good on it. It's not quite the right colour, but uh, it's not seen once the um, heat shields on the mufflers and everything are back on, so it's all good. The paint that was used is a, uh, an enamel ceramic. It's a, um, a heat treated paint which will absorb the heat um, and uh, it's used on exhaust pipes and engines and such. So when you go to start painting these sections, make sure you use the right product, otherwise. Uh, the normal standard paint that you buy off the shelf won't last, it'll just uh, come straight off the heat first time you ride it. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll start installing it back to the bike and once I've got all that done I'll uh, jump back on and uh, show you how all that went. There we are, the bike's now, all the exhaust pipes are fully reinstalled, really good. Uh, one little tip that I didn't mention uh, earlier in this video is that uh, it might pay you just to release the front header pipe, just undo the foot board there. Uh, leave it as uh, an assembly and just move it uh, towards your crash bar and yeah, it just makes the installation of the uh, uh, rear header pipe and Cadillac converter just a little bit easier. So a uh, little tip there for you. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll uh, give it a start for you, give you a listen. Sounds great. There's yeah, a huge improvement from uh, before when I had the Cadillac converter still in the bike. Uh, I just took it for a drive around the block, a few bog laps. Uh, sounds really nice and full throttle, beautiful. I haven't got out on the highway yet, but uh, just the short little run I did do, it sounded really good. Yeah, I'm very, very impressed with it. But the beauty about doing what I've done too, guys, is that you know, you've kept the integrity of the bike. You've still got all the original pipes on the bike. You haven't altered anything, bar the slip-ons. Um, yeah, so just removing the catalytic converter from the bike was a uh, yeah, good move. Obviously it runs a lot freer now, with more uh, flow, and the note's beautiful. I can imagine what it'll be like when I put my cams in. Yeah, it should be fantastic. So uh, all the best in your little venture if you have a go at doing it. Uh, like I say, just take your time, have a look at it. It's not that hard of a process, and I think you'll uh, enjoy the results. So, well, all the best, I'll uh, catch us all later on.